Welcome back to the London Free Press Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. We so appreciate it. I'm your host, Lindsay Barnett, and I am joined by London Free Press reporter and columnist Jane Sims. Jane, how are you today? I'm good, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. We were just discussing off recording um, about how I had a bit of a reprieve with regards to the podcast topic and it not being pandemic related over the past couple of weeks. Well, major news, kind of a big bomb dropped. I knew we knew this was coming, but I wasn't expecting it so fast. Uh, Dr. Kieran Moore on Wednesday announced mask mandates as of March 21st in most settings. There's a little asterisk there. Going to be gone, completely gone. And let me tell you, my Twitter feed is polarizing to say the least. So um, there's a lot to unpack here with regards to mass mandates. How are you feeling, first of all? You know, I was thinking about it as I was watching Dr. Moore this morning as he put more meat on the bones of what this announcement is. And I thought, you know, um, I think there is, if I can say it, a bit of trauma out there amongst a lot of us, particularly after Omicron. Omicron came on so quickly and changed everything in a heartbeat. And so many people got sick, even though they were vaccinated. And it was was a very confusing time. And I think that for a lot of us, and I'll put myself in this boat, I am not fully prepared at this point to get rid of my mask in every single setting. It it still feels funny to me, uh, just simply because I do think it is a great uh, tool in keeping yourself healthy. And, and it took me back actually to three years ago. Three years ago at this time, um, I was in J- Japan and in Japan, people wear masks and nobody thinks anything of it. Um, some people do, some people don't. Nobody makes a fuss about it. It's your own choice. And that's what you do. And I guess I'm kind of hoping that we can be mature enough about this and respectful of each other enough about this, that if people wanna wear a mask to the grocery store, that's okay. That will leave people alone, right? And at the same time, if you don't wanna wear a mask, that's your choice too. And we can kind of find some sort of happy medium here. It it all feels a little too fast. It all feels a little bit, um, you feel kind of vulnerable simply because we have been living this for so long, but you know, I guess, I guess we all hope that the moment they said no more masks, we were going to have a big celebration. It's weird how we're feeling. It, it's, it's weird how a lot of people will be reacting to this news. You made so many good points there. And the thing that kind of caught me off guard, I started this by saying we knew this was coming. Premier Doug Ford had said probably by end of March, beginning of April. I think my whole pause, if you will, with regards to this is the timing. March 21st, that is the first Monday back to school for the kiddies after March break. And there was definitely a little bit of like, ugh, cringe for me. And I don't, listen, my little guy's seven and a half months. He's not going to school yet. And so it doesn't really affect me, but the timing and people are going away on March break. I know so many people, my social feeds have been flooded with people heading south. Yeah. People are desperate to resume normal life. And I completely get it. I am chomping at the bit as well. That being said, you nailed it last time I spoke to you. When we were talking about mask mandates being lifted, you said, if they do it, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. And we know we're heading into warmer weather. We know we're going to see cases dip for sure. But then what happens come fall? Right. What happens? Right. Right. If if another Omicron wave hit, how willing would we be to to once again climb back into our basements and and uh, shut the doors and wear a mask everywhere and and uh, you know make our bubble small and do all those things I think it'll be very difficult it, it, it's now let's let's be clear we have come a long long way this is we're, we're heading into this summer do you remember when we were but this time last year, there wasn't very many people vaccinated, Like right? We were still at the beginning of the vaccination campaign. There's tons of folks vaccinated. The majority of the population over the age of 12 are vaccinated, right? The kids, that's another story. And I, 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 I don't even know where to go with that, but anyway, we're vaccinated. Antivirals have come on, okay? 
antiviral medications that are quite are, are quite good. Um, they're not widely distributed at this point, but they will be. It's just like anything else; it's going to ramp up. Um, we we we're good at things like washing our hands, wearing a mask, keeping social distancing, and assessing risk. I don't think we ever really thought about, as a general population, how to assess our own risk when it comes to a virus. We're really good at it now. We're super good at it now. So we're in a different place. It still feels weird. It still feels, and you and I, you know, we discussed this a little bit before. I'm not sure it, it's chicken and egg. <laughs> like, is this a scientific decision or is this a political decision or is it both? Um, that's going to be left for those of us watching this stuff closely to as assess. My feeling at this point is, you know, Omicron there is, is still circulating through this community at a very high rate. It's leaving elderly people, immunocompromised people and unvaccinated people vulnerable. And yet there is a deadline for a provincial election on June the 2nd. And I think this government would have no, has no issue in that what they're thinking in their minds and we got to get rid of this stuff now because by the time we drop the red here, <clears throat> we got to be able to say that everything's free. So <laughs> that causes a lot of, of hesitation as well. Is, 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 you know, who's pulling the strings here? Are the scientists saying, yeah, you're going to be okay? Or are the politicians saying, hey, I'm not going to get elected if everybody's going to be wearing a mask again. We, we already know the missteps that have happened. And we already know that this election is probably going to be a referendum on how, how the government handled the pandemic. So having a, having a mask mandate still hanging around by June 2nd or by the end of April, let's be clear, it's got to be six weeks before, that's not good politics if you're, if you're a governing party. So do I think we're at a point where we can do it? Probably because we're smarter when it comes to the pandemic. Do I think that's a, that's that it's a scientific decision? Partially, I think there's a lot of politics going into this. I completely agree, and I'm glad that you brought up the June second date because anybody who pays attention to the news has seen a lot of decisions made, and in the back of their mind has said, "Well, is that political or is that scientific? Which is it?" Because it, it kind of seems that there can't be both. Something I want to talk about, and this is going to be a two-parter, so stick with me for a minute. My Twitter feed right after the announcement, like I said, so polarizing. And people that I know quite well who have been not pro-mandate, but say playing the game, so to speak, have said, finally, I can't wait to burn these things. I'm so done with it. I'm ready to get back to life. And then there was a lot of comments from people with the word sheep. Those of you that still want to wear it, sheep sheeple we've seen this repeatedly all over social media there seems to be a little bit of misconception with regards to masks and i wear a mask not for myself but to keep my germs to myself to protect other people i also have some people in my life who are immunocompromised and who have some disabilities and so that's always top of mind if i want to see some people in my family do we expect that things will be civil Come March 21st, if I choose to go to the grocery store and I'm picking out baby food for my kid and I got a mask on, because what 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 do we think we're going to see there? And second, do we think that businesses are going to lift mandates or make their own decisions? We have three restaurants in the city right now, two for sure, Morrissey House and Craft Pharmacy. I can't remember the third. I want to say it's the River Room, still implementing the QR code for vaccine passports. What do we think we're going to see? Well, I found it interesting that both Premier Ford and Dr. Moore this morning uh, basically said, if you want to wear a mask, it's okay. And they kept going back to please be civil to one another. And that I think is, is, in, is in anticipation of, of that kind of backlash. We've already seen how nasty people can be. I mean, let's be clear, we, you know, we watched the images out of Ottawa and we, we know what happened in Windsor and along the 402, um, who, that, that, that the mask has become more of a political symbol than a, than a, safety, a safety tool. I keep going back to, and because you, know, you and I are immersed in this stuff and we read a lot of stuff and we look at a lot of stuff, 
masks do more than stop COVID-19. They actually, you know, if we look at the flu rates, you know, the influenza rates, and we look at other respiratory um, afflictions, those numbers are down. And all that has to do with keeping apart and wearing a mask. Um, we expect a surgeon to wear a mask while they, while they perform surgery. Um, I don't think that we should be upset with someone if they want to wear a mask to go to the grocery store. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm probably going to, I'm keeping my mask handy. I mean, if I, again, we're going to go back to risk assessment, right? Mm -hmm. You have to feel comfortable as an individual going into a certain place. And if that requires you to put a mask on, by all means do it, right? I, I, I don't, I, I, there, there, will there be backlash? Maybe. But again, if, if the whole campaign surrounding I don't want to wear a mask was about individual freedom, people should have the freedom to choose to wear a mask. Too. Fair enough. And do we think, I know Costco in the United States just last week finally lifted their mask mandates. And this was, I'm going to use air quotations for those of you listening, not watching this. Uh, the United States has been living COVID free, pandemic free for the past year. And Costco made the decision to keep the mask mandate. So they've just now lifted it in the United States. Do we expect to see some businesses here keeping the mask mandate even beyond the restrictions? I know that's heavy speculation. I just can't help but wonder because some, the three restaurants who kept the QR code faced some backlash. And then there was a big outpouring of support saying, you know what, this is your decision. That's your freedom, who you want, what kind of clientele you want to keep your staff safe. What do we think we're going to see here? Again, I'm not sure. Right. Um, I think there's probably some small businesses who are itching to get rid of the mask mandates. I mean, this has been, if you run a small business, like if you run, let's say, I don't know, what's an example? Let's say you got a little, I don't know, barber shop, right? And you can have one client in at a time and, and, you know, and you're all masked up and you probably have some clients who really don't want to wear the mask anymore and your business has suffered. I can see the, the I, I can see the decision being, being easier. I can see it being, you know, you know, I got to keep my business going, so I'm going to take the, man, the mandate off. Bigger stores, they may they may be able to make make choices that we don't expect, right? Uh, you know, will they? I don't know. I don't know. I, I you know, there there might be more hassle to it than there is uh, you, utility, if you know what I mean. That that you know, as as much as as some businesses will want to take a higher road with with using masks um they may decide not to simply because it's 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 not worth the the uh in well it's not inconvenience the confrontation that might ensue from it so uh there'll be a lot of people who are really going to be looking at this closely like recreation programs you know i mean you, you've got to think about those teams. You've got to think about, about places where people gather and, and, and what the risk is to do so. And if in fact you are able to, to have a, have a handle on exactly what you're walking into. And I guess that's your own individual responsibility when it comes down to it. Well, I feel comfortable in a place where people don't walk in with masks and for the short term. No, I won't. But then, you know, maybe, I don't know. I guess it's all part of this journey that we've been on, Lindsay. I, 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 I had hoped that this would be a day of celebration and it's a thing and it's actually a, a moment of trepidation for a lot of folks. I completely agree. I expected to feel more uh, elation and relief, I guess. And uh, much like you, I'm feeling a little mixed at the moment. Maybe I just need to sleep on it. I don't really know. We're just going to have to wait and see kind of how this plays out. Thank you right. so much for your time and your insight. As always, Jane, I really appreciate it. And if you're listening to this right now, I'm sure we'll be talking before the mask mandate is lifted on the 21st. But just please keep in mind to be kind to each other. That's really all anybody needs in life is kindness and respect. So wherever your decisions lay, whatever your belief system is, 
just respect other people and their decisions and be kind to one another. We'll be back again next week with another edition of the LF Press Podcast. Until then, stay well.